Hello guys, how are you doing today? So, it's actually the second stream today, and it is midnight. So, I, I do, I kind of just want to get it going. Um, we kind of messed up last time. Uh, well, I say we, with me, it's me. I messed up during the last stream. I queued up the same dungeon. Uh, I'm so addicted, but I can't say if you need some support. But say if you need some support. Oh, cool. You are addicted to that new game, right? Um, that I honestly have no clue what the title was about to begin. Baldur's Gate. There we go. Yeah, it, 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 it's not my kind of game. Um, I tried... Uh, they are also responsible for... Damn, what's the game called? Not Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, the other one. Um, Divinity. I I did I hated every second of it. It's because of my playstyle. Um and, and what I mean what I mean with that is I I'm a pillager. Every house I get into, everything that's going on, I need to pillage. I need to rob them of everything they got. And it gets very, very boring. It, I know it's not the right way of playing, and Baldur's Gate is in its own league, but I'll wait. I'll wait. And see where the game goes. It's, uh, I'm not a huge fan of turn-based combat systems. But... I, I might just check out some guy playing, I don't know. I was actually hoping that Asmund God would play, since he did have like the beta. Uh, but so far, no, no shot. Anyways, I'm going to be queuing up for the right dungeon, the trial. Let's make sure everything is cleared. It's this one. We're going to be attacking Shiva. Join up. I'm, I'm on a priest. Should not take that long. It's an 8 man. Let's just hope we won't die. I also just got myself up to 130 eye level. That means that uh, we will also be starting to gear up our warrior now. Also just did my leveling dungeon on the Arcanist. Which is now level 28. I'm, I'm, I'm lacking gear like left, right and center. Let's go. But anyways, it's it's good to hear either that you're enjoying yourself. I, I'm I'm going to be extremely happy when I reach Heaven's Ward. Look, I like the post play of a Realm Reborn. It's 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 a lot. Also, yeah, fair warning, I'm tired, so my pronunciation is going to suck even harder than usual, and I like making screenshots. You should never have come here, Warrior of Light. I labor only to forge a lasting peace. A peace you would deny us out of ignorance True. and blind faith. No matter. If it is our fate to be at odds, then it is mine to strike you down. We whom gods and men have forsaken shall be the instruments of our own deliverance. Okay. Partake of my flesh. Fill this vessel with your light. Walk amongst your brothers and sisters once more. Oh, Saint Shiva, still the hatred within our hearts and bless us with eternal grace. Yeah, it's cool. I like this intro. <laughs> it's 
still don't like how Shiva looks, but you know, it's just me going to party. Bye. Yeah, everyone is like, oh, dude, go. Oh, there's two white mages in there. That usually is a very good thing. Because we will have a lot of regen going on. Don't go with me. We usually don't have to do that much. kidding me? I died? Oh, this is bad. That's bad. That, that's... I was not really paying attention. It's the ease up. Damn it, I don't have enough. with another medica oh now the other priest is down and I just used swift cast no one dies please come on don't die you know what at least we died both Oh no. Is this normal? Scattered like dust? Oh no. Body white? That would have been bad. Let's go with another medica. So much going on. Okay, let's make sure we do. Cool, a song though. Okay, what killed me last time? Because I really missed that. America. And give him more regen. He will have two regen, but that guy is like. There's no need for him to get any. any damage whatsoever. Also the same gear. Yeah. There we go. That push you fought me as you were standing in the tank and tank you stand is correctly. No no I think it definitely was my fault. Um I think it is there was some sort of attack and I didn't really witness it. How's things actually going? Like 77 still, which is okay. The other priest actually did a great job. Okay, is there a modern cinematic coming in? Yeah, of course there is. So you give another crystal or what? Okay, so she still lives. Look at that face. Fool. Blind bloody fool. You, of all people, should understand the suffering war begets. That no sacrifice is too great if it brings an end to the violence. No sacrifice. I think there's definitely uh, a line we have to draw somewhere to sacrifices. Mine is the righteous cause. I think they all say that. You fight in a war you do not understand. A pawn of liars and schemers. And they are no less ignorant than you. 
following the creed of their fathers without question, never thinking to ask why. Trapped in a delusion of their own creation and blind to the truth. Warrior of Light, redemption is not beyond us. That's good. I think that's good to hear. We who walk before may lead those who walk after. Seek the Keeper of the Lake. See with eyes unclouded. Are you talking about a dragon? Do not squander Mother's gift. Oh. Wait, see that the voice of the, the mother crystal? And so the vessel withdraws, a predictable outcome. Nevertheless, La Habrea will be pleased. How unfortunate. Who the hell is that guy? Okay. I love it when they voice stuff. Uh, NCO, uh, it's like... Uh it's like a more right. How do you say that? The AFC and all. But mainly a thanks for being chatty. So let, let's do this right now. Let, let's go here. Let's see. We, could, we actually got two people. That I think should be. One is this. And the other one is Millen. Million. Oh, I think you and Mill would be great. There we go. Let's talk with her. I don't think it's going to be voiced anymore, which is uh, a shame, but I really, really love that things are getting more voiced. Did we also get more tomes? Yeah, we did. We get a few. By the 12, you're alive. I mean, of course you're alive. Why wouldn't you be? Well, because I could have been dead. Eyes are dead. What? And you're certain about that, are you? Ravonians are skilled with glamours after all look if you say what you saw i believe you i it's just i've never heard of a primal being summoned like that before are you sure you're not injured head trauma has been known to cause hallucinations you see no fair enough i was only asking i don't like her i, I don't know what's what what it is with her I just don't like her. <laughs> hey MC, how are you doing? If you're asking me, there's not to be gained from mulling over the implications of your story in the freezing cold. Let's save it for the rising stones, eh? I'll get everyone to meet us there. Ah, but before that, you had best pay a visit to Whiteprim Front and speak with Alfinot. He's probably worried sick about you. Sleepy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, me too. But I'm, I'm going to be doing this for, I think, three hours. Or, or when I'm just unable to read anymore. And that could be very, very soon. That or he's busy playing at politics with the Asgardians. Either way, I'm sure he'll be delighted to see you hale and healthy. Speaking of which, you don't have a headache or anything, do you? No? Blood vision? Oh, no. No reason. See you again soon. I wanna go to sleep. What? Go, go to bed. Go to bed. Why, you have... 
I think you, you can do whatever, right? <laughs> Just get some sleep. Also, it's like... Stream, still you can't read. Still you can't read, yeah. Which... Me being dyslectic is... Almost all the time. Uh, well... I... Well, I'm not going to be sucking up. I would just say that, like, it's more like an exemplary thing where people get, like, the promotion to do NCO for being, like, chatty and so... Oh, well. You're an example for the others. By being chatty. And then, how do you do a blink emotion? Like, so, yeah, so. All right, chat is clear of bots gonna lurk now. You, um, he's ready for assistance, have fun. Thank you, appreciate that. And the bot is still alive. Well, I'll be darned. Alright, let's, uh, let's get up here. Let's not ch stare at the chocobo behind. There she is, and none, and none the worse for wear. Was there ever any doubt that the Warrior of Light would succeed? I think I read that wrong. <laughs> I think I speak for all of us when I say that I should like nothing more than to hear the stringing tale of your victory. If you would be so kind. Then we were too late to prevent the summoning. Well, it's kind of, you know, she is the summoning. Summoner. Summon. Summon. Summoner. 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 Whatever. But not too late to prevent further loss of life, an outcome worthy of celebration, and one of which you have Une to thank. I was actually thinking that's why it took a bit longer, so I, could, I, could I leave my name out? They constantly call names. Like they're in a conversation with people, yet they every sentence they mention the name of the person very directly. I, I don't know if it's normal. I think it's not. Well, you are right, of course. We... It's like this. Like, you are right, of course. Sir Emmerich. Of course, you would, you would just... You were saying something, you respond. You don't need to say, like... It's like, he's saying this, and Emmerich's like... What about me? Well, you're right, of course. We should be content with what we have accomplished. I, for one, could not have witnessed uh, wi uh, wished for a better outcome. Shiva is no longer a threat and the heretics have been routed. Aye, there is a matter of Isat's escape, but she cannot run forever. Whatever it, ta uh, whatever it takes, days, weeks, moons or even years, my knights will find her. In the meanwhile, Lord Drillmond, this, this makes sense because he was not part of the conversation. Is the caravan ready? The supplies that your men recovered have been prepared for transport in accordance with your wishes. Rest assured that my knights will see them safely to a reverend toll. Of that I have no doubt. I take it these are the self-same supplies that the heretic stole from the house for Tep's caravan. Less the crystals we um less the crystals which compressed the bulk of the shipman shipment yes scarcely affection of Scarcely a fraction of that which was promised, but a meaningful contribution to your cause all the same. Why do we need these crystals, actually? Why, why wouldn't we need the crystals? Oh, on an unrelated note, might I trouble you to accompany me to Dragon, Camp Dragonhead at your earliest convenience? 
well, that's basically now. It's not for my benefit. A certain lord was most distressed when he learned of your intent to risk life and limb to stop Iceheart. It took half a dozen nights to restrain him, as I am told. Hey, he's in love with me. He has to be. Men give vent to their anxious in myriad ways. Pray not think less of him. No, we'll just hit him. We'll just hit him silly. It's fine. Well, that's actually done. So let's make sure that we don't do the wrong dungeon again. There we go. And... Teleport over. Uh, what's this? Uh, I'll try my best. When I'm at work, it's tough. Other than that, I'll try to be chatty as introvert as an introvert can be. She's definitely oh, he, she, whatever. Plus, uh, a fountain of information as fast as I can type with a, with a controller. Wow. With a controller, I would not have thought you were. On using a controller. That's a skill by itself. Very fast typing with a controller. That 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 should be a skill. Uh, do we need to be over? No. Okay. It's it's we're talking about this certain lord over here. On chiffon. What were you thinking? Waging your very being on a dubious theory which might allow you to enter Isa's lair, knowing full well that she could have sufficient uh, forewarning to complete her ritual to summon Siva anyway. And then, and then engaging the abomination in mortal combat? By the Fury, it's the Staff of Ballads, a battle for the ages. Would that I had been there to fight by your side? Yet, here I was forced to wait, condemned to wonder at the fate of a dear friend for a variable eternity. I would not wish such torture on my most hated enemy. Oh my god, he's so full of it. But here you are now, and that is what truly matters. Let's move on. Sir Emmerich wishes to have a word with you and Master Alphanod in private. He awaits us in the Antecessor? Scissory? Intercessory. I'm sure that's actually a word. A proud console plat. Though I should be. Sh uh, though I should. In a UZ gameplay with a control type. Still. Uh, what's this? I would. Not be as fast. Yeah, that, that's me streaming, guys. That's me just... I'll, I'll talk to chat if there is any. Or I talk in the FC. That's how I do it. Let's go. I'm hoping it's voiced again. Like, everything is getting more voiced, which I really, really love. On behalf of the Holy See of Ishgard, allow me to express my deepest thanks. Never before have we been required to contend with a prime. Indeed, there were fears in some quarters that our knights might not be equal to the task. From what we have now learned of these beings, I can say with certainty that we would have lost a great many men had the Scions not intervened. Then the argument for preemptive action should be self-evident. Perchance now you will reconsider my proposal that Ishgard move against Natalan. Ere we first met, a similar proposal was tabled, but the Holy See decreed that we were to observe and that military action should be taken only in self-defense. Which makes sense. It's the same as Switzerland. All things considered, it was not an unreasonable decision. Since the Calamity, two vigils have fallen to the Horde, while Garuda has never shown any inclination to storm the Gates of Judgment. That's true. Which is why this unprecedented crisis and its resolution may prompt a change in policy. 
You who have faced these primals know well the threat they pose. Ishgard did not. Not until now. You actually weren't there. And there is naught like a brush with death to change a man's outlook. At the very least, this should silence any lingering objections to our arrangement with Revenant's toll. The Holy See may even feel moved to grant us its formal endorsement. Yeah, that would be nice. So far as it is possible, the Scions shall be compensated for their service. We should be grateful for any aid you can provide. As a gesture of good faith, I shall withdraw my previous request. Your people are doubtless needed elsewhere. That will not be necessary. We too have a vested interest in watching Dravania's movements. I see. Once more, I must thank Yeah, because they're behind the trader Ivy. Sir Emmerich, if I may, do you truly believe that Midgard Zoma could return? The heavens are a window unto truth, but those who interpret their movements are not infallible. I requested your involvement as a precautionary measure. But of course, you sought an excuse to compensate us from the first, mindful of what would happen if Revenant's toll were taken by your enemies. True. Ishgard is not wont to aid its neighbors, but that does not preclude it from manipulating them to serve its own interests. Choose your next words carefully. Why? It, it makes perfect sense. Do you know what sort of man becomes Lord Commander of the Temple Knights? Uh, one that makes his, you know, takes these peoples first? One who know. comes from good stock. I did not. Yet here I am. Now, why do you suppose that is? Because I swiftly learned to tell the difference between words, deeds, and beliefs. You are correct, Master Leveo. Ishgard desires to see Revenant's toll flourish, as it would present a troublesome obstacle to our enemies from the south. We are so glad to be of use to you. <laughs> as we are to you. Ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement, lest we forget. One born of necessity. The dragons grow more restless by the day, and the heretics harry us nigh without cease. We have contended with such troubles for centuries, but there are limits to even our endurance. Yet as a pauper is loath to part with his meager possessions, the leaders of Ishgard are not wont to render up their trust to outsiders. But, with perseverance on our part, they may yet be made to see the light. Nevertheless, one must take care when walking the road less traveled. Wise words, Sir Emmerich. I shall make a point to remember them. I must apologize for my earlier outburst. I hope it will not sour our good relations. That would be very fast. Not at all. You but spoke from the heart. I trust you understand that at times my duties may prevent me from meeting with you. On such occasions, my second in command will speak for me. Lucia, at your service. Pray excuse our reticence. We are but wary of speaking too freely, lest our sentiments be made known to our enemies. Know that the Lord Commander and I are of one mind. For the sake of Ishgard, and of Eorzea at large, I pray our peoples can put aside their differences. Would be nice. Those who dwell in the past risk losing sight of their future. Should aught befall one of our shipments, pray inform Lucia immediately. You may also relay to her any words you might have for me alone. Not being of Ishgardian birth, she owes no allegiance to any noble house, making her as near to incorruptible as one confined in my homeland. Suffice it to say, I trust her completely, and so may you. Which reminds me, Lord Orshafon, if you would be so kind. I was actually not far off with his name, or Orshafon. Orshafon. Certainly. Certainly. 
In times such as these, trust is ever in short supply. Mayhap this will go some way to rectify the problem. Money. The results of our investigation into the heretic's recent attacks, as well as our interrogation of the merchant you detained. Sir Emmerich, I cannot thank you enough. Think nothing of it. Ishgard may be many things, but it is no friend to Garlemald. Did I not tell you to have faith, my friend? The ice unclouded. It would seem we have much to discuss with our friend at the Rising Stone. If what you're saying is true, Isa's methods of summoning Shiva defies all precedent. It necessitates a complete reprisal of the primal threat and of our approach of combating it. Moreover, there are grave ramifications if word of this incident reaches Imperial ears. The Garlean Empire believes that primals are an insufferable menace, that their mere existence is a threat to this very star. As much, they deem any action taken against the beast tribes to be justified by default. Imagine then, if it becomes known that it was not only the beast tribe of Eorzea that could summon primals, but her civil, uh, citizen, uh, civilized people as well. Any lingering objection to the Eorzean campaign would be vanished overnight. Where before we had to, con where before we had to contend with a single Imperial Legion, we could well find ourselves facing the combined might of all Garlemald. Yeah, that's actually interesting that we needed like three city-states, like three, three countries in order to deal with one legion. But I speak unadvisedly. Come on, minute. It's better that we continue this conversation in Modona. Let's go. And there's something in my lip, it's annoying the heck out of me. It's a little bit, I don't know, like, they may be stung by a, by a mosquito or something. And it's, that's why I've been using... It's just so annoying. Words cannot well express how glad I am to see you return to us hale and whole. Needless to say, I am most eager to hear your account of that which occurred in Curthis, assuming you're ready to speak of it. Excellent. I shall summon the others at once. Iceheart used her own body as a vessel for a primal soul? Master Louis Soir's writings make no mention of such a possibility. Can we be certain this entity was a primal? Yes. As certain as we can be that good King Mogulmog the Twelfth was a primal, I should think. Both were ostensibly summoned. Let's not quibble over definitions. Of more concern is the implication that Iceheart retained her will, even after she was possessed. We are talking about a mortal, wielding the power of a primal. It can't possibly be that easy, can it? There must be some sort of sacrifice required. 
Or maybe she's just special? She's best. What qualities this woman possesseth, I know not. But full sure am I that she was groomed for this role. Few are privy to the secrets of summoning, and but a single party standeth to profit from their dissemination. Well, I wouldn't presume to comment on how the lass came to know about summoning, but I will say that what she summoned was a primal. The readings were the same, or near as damn it. Strange as it all sounds, it's really no different from what you've faced before. Then mayhap it is time that we re-examined our previous encounters. Oh, pack your things, Ida. We're going back to Gridania. Yes, sir. Okay. Why? About Iceheart's final words to you. Hear, feel, think. Hydaelyn speaks to her as well. If Iceheart is blessed with the power of the Echo, she will doubtless have used it to further her goals. Or could it be that it was a revelation granted her by the Echo which first set her on this path? She did say that the Ishgardians were blind to the truth. Oh, yeah, of course, that she could see the past. Or she speaks with, I don't know, what entity. Do you think she has knowledge of the origins of the Ishgardian Dravanian War? It would do much to explain her unwavering conviction. Did not the Lady Iceheart implore thee to seek the Keeper of the Lake? And did she not imply that in so doing thou wouldst come to see with eyes unclouded? Midgard Zoma was a king amongst kings who reigned for centuries on end. But he is dead and his wisdom lost to the ages. Unless the Ishgardians' fears are well founded. It would seem we have yet another reason to stand watch over the Keeper of the Lake. For our mercy, we are well positioned to do so. Iceheart, Shiva, Asians, and Midgard Zoma. I shudder to think how they're all connected. Interesting. Okay. Okay, bit of XP, bit of money. Um, so I, I we this morning we we looked up how to pronounce this and I forgot because it's French and and I don't know any any French. Uh, let's look it up again. How to to say yeah that one. Woa. Roa is like Woa, similar like Patrick Rowe's last name. Wa. Holy? How to pronounce punt, uh, dot com? Okay. Why you? Why you? Right. Why you? Why you? Why you? Oh, it's Wyler. Wyler. Okay, Wyler. Makes no sense to me, but still. Here we go. Uh, we get a eye level 110 weapon coffer. Which we will also put in the saddlebag for when we start in Heavensward. We were going to go Red Mage or Samurai. Or both. I mean, the Scaldi. Uh, Aeons of knowledge of Midgard summer. Given his great age, I dare say he appears in more than a few. Hmm. Do you hear that? The commotion outside. Would you see if art is missed? Okay, we'll we'll do that. We'll uh we'll do it. <laughs> Wola, Wola. Yeah, I'm going to forget that completely. It's well that you are on hand. We have a problem. Wola has escaped. It happened shortly after the immortal flames took her into custody. She had been placed in a dungeon cell ahead of a coming trial. But apparently, 
the, the accommodation was not to her liking. The turnkey was found the turnkey was found slaying along with two guards. It's plain she received inside help. Citizens report be uh, seeing uh, Wally. I keep saying Wally. Like Wally? Wally. Um, quitted the city via the gate of Nald with a bloody spear in her hand. She makes for Castrum Meridianum. I am certain of it. With her faith. In Eorzea, as good as sealed, what recourse has she but to flee to her imperial masters? Even as we speak, Captain Ilbert and the first are hot upon her heels. Pray make haste to Camp Blue Fork, a blue fro uh, blue fork and join the hunt. Hi. Let's go hunt the traitor down. Smite her down. Yeah, that lump is annoying when talking. I'll find a lot of excuses. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. There he is, Ilbert. My thanks for coming, sir. I've spoken with the soldiers here. They say that she walked through the camp with not uh, not a bell ago, and I'm saying C because I cannot pronounce the name. I she walked right through. Did not. Uh, you did not hear a miss. You did not miss here. We have Robar's decision to keep the master secret, the meta secret, to thanks for that. Bad for morale, he said, was true. As for a result, not a single flame in the garrison made any attempt to detain her, and so here we are. She must not be allowed to reach the castrum. Well, let's go. I'm almost level 55 and I think we want to switch to either our warrior or to our ninja. Oh, that's kind of cool. Do we not just... Ah, oh, we should have teleported actually. Ah, pollution even in Final Fantasy. How wonderful. Alright, let's take a look. So, Ilbert's over here. And there is a spear. So, I'm going to be assuming it's fighting time. Desync to level 50. Sure. Makes sense. This wretch. Uh, this wretch was with uh, Wally. Rowley. He threw himself at us as his mistress might that his mistress might escape. She didn't blink when we cut him down, not even when he started screaming. No loyalty even to her own, the goddamn harpy. With me, Cyan, we almost have her. It's so generic. Do it me, you shyin. Dude, I'm, I'm like your master or something. Cool gear, though. There we go. Four against the garrison. That's fine. We should be easy. Yeah, that's... That's a lot. Okay, let's go. Holy casting. Right over here. Do it again. I kind of don't have to keep anyone alive, so that's fortunate. Stun is fully resistant, so you won't get stunned anymore. Luckily, he's dead now. Go, arrow. Show no quarter. Yeah, we're actually doing damage, so maybe we want to focus on that. Some death floor over there. Let's do this one. Always miscasting holy first. It's usually where we 
just have to focus on the... How do you, how do you say it in this game? It's like fodder? Hey, that's a problem. Deal with that. Okay, 30 seconds until we can use the voice of mind. Presence of mind. And let's see. Ooh, Aline the Razor. Fuck yeah, that's a good name. I like that. Also, they're using a center like it. We can't do that as players, right? Hey, they can kill enough. Let's deal with this. Actually, we don't have to. 0.01. Oh, we need to definitely kill everything inside. That's great. Oh, there's actually some domains joining in. Cool. How much are they summoning? Kinda feels silly that she's already like hurt this badly. Like, either give us some more HP or something. Uh, what's that with that red? Oh, that is the... What's that? The, the AoE attack, right? Yeah. Binder and do it tight. Yes, sir. Good work, man. Our esteemed commander joins the field. See, and our imperial cronies pushed us close, but we were better. Not really, but it wasn't really close. Come on, man. Behold, a respected officer of the immortal flames. People looked up to you as one of the order's founding members. One of its pillars. It saddens me to see you fall so low. You would... Well, what would you know of Lo, you spoiled little lordling, who has never known any want? Yeah, he, he put him right on his place, like that. People such as you take wealth and birth for granted. You think it's your God's given right to rule over others. You know not of our plight. The injustice we low-born is guardians must endure. To the noble lords and ladies, we are not people but resources to be consumed. I did what I had to do to survive. Stealing, killing, even whoring myself. Wow. <laughs> it is no fault of mine. If fools imagine me, a paragon when I joined the flames. I, tell, uh, I hear you tell it. One would think... You, the only person ever to have suffered. In case you have forgotten, Roban himself was born into poverty. As was I. We lived hand to mouth. With little more than the shirts on our back. Hunger was our constant companion. Yet never did we bo uh, bemoan our lot in life. Nor did we begrudge others with their fortune. We accepted the hand that we had been dealt and played it to the best of our ability. Life was a battle eye, but no matter what fate threw, uh, threw at us, we took it on the chin and came back for more. Everything we have, we fought for. How are we any different then? It's true that we were, bo we were both mercenaries of low birth. And it's true that we both had our fair share of struggles. But where, but whereas I sold my sword, you, Marshal, sold your comrades. If life had taught me one thing, it is that you never betray your own. I would sooner cut off my own arm 
than raise a hand against a friend. But enough talk. I will return to Ulda. You will return to Ulda to face justice, and the people who trust you will drag. And the people who trust you have dragged through the gutter. Okay, that makes sense. A better sentence than I could do it. Why don't you follow them? Not as much as a hint of remorse. It's well that this sordid business is finally at an end. A friend's betrayal cuts deeper than steel. We must hope that we have chosen our allies more wisely than Robans chose his. Okay, there's the weapons coffer. They're all safe. I wonder if we get another one. I've oh, what's heard. going on? Truly bothersome business. No, I do not foresee a problem on that front. The main concern is Roban. There is no telling what the brute might do. Yes, I'm seeing. Have the blades watch him in the flames day and night. You may leave the Sultana to me. I shall personally attend her grace. Sever one of the East Aldenard trade routes. That ought to keep Lola Rito occupied for a while. Just like that. Nanamo Unamo. For my sake, pray be a good little Sultana to the last. Okay. Do we now get the weapon? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's go Chocobo Saddleback. Put it right over there. So we have a full set for whatever we, we pick. I know it's not the best, and we, we just simply don't have enough tomes to buy like a full eye level 30 of 130 right off the bat. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? Let us cling to Kata. Captain Ilbert and I have a few questions for the Flame Marshal regarding the circumstances of our miraculous escape. When we have completed our interrogation, we shall take our findings directly to General Roban, and that shall be the end of it. Your work here is done, my friend, my thanks. Ah, but I have one last task for you. Return to the Rising Stone and apprise Minfilia of all that has happened. I am aware that in dissident held Roly, Rydal Roly in high regard. For better or for worse, she will want to know uh, how this tale ends. <laughs> Guess it won't end well. We still haven't leveled up, that's just actually nice. You know, I was actually expecting us to get a lot more experience. I think this is the end of 2.4, right? Welcome back, my friend. I have already received word from Alfino. Then why am I here? If, if, if he... Why send me over here? To think that Flame Marshal Huayu was the Galian agent. Why? I know not what to say. Together with Robon... Eline lent us much needed aid at the time of our order's founding. She was particularly passionate about the need to tackle the primal threat. Yeah, of course, because she's a government spy and they kind of want to kill the entire beast tribes. When we discussed the subject, her eyes fairly shone with determination. 
Whatever else she may have been, I choose to believe that it was her true self with whom I spoke then. But now is not the time to dwell on such matters. No, that has absolutely no point. I have an important announcement to make regarding our effort to defeat the Asians. We shall begin as soon as everyone is assembled. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Get the job done. My thanks for coming, friends. What's Moon up with Breeder, the floor is yours. By oh, now, it, I'm sure mind. you're all familiar with White Aurasite, the miraculous material that'll allow us to capture Asian souls. Back at Snowcloak, we verified its ability to absorb vast amounts of ether. True. Alas, it leaves something to be desired in the area of stability. The stone can only store ether for a short while before expelling its contents. In addition to Aurasite's inherent limitations, we must needs be wary of our enemy's strength. Our foe draweth upon an infinite wellspring of power. Even should we succeed in entrapping him, the stone will not long contain his wrath. Meaning that, if we want to kill the swine, we'll have to be quick about it. Tis our belief that an Asian soul may be permanently undone, if smitten by a sufficiently concentrated burst of pure ether. The only trouble is, we can't say for sure how concentrated the burst needs to be. Without knowing how much ether an Asian soul is composed of, we're basically guessing. Our sole clue lieth in thy struggle with La Habrea. During that encounter, Heidelin bid you forge what she called a Blade of Light, a weapon which took the form of a luminous stream of energy. Based on your description, we believe the blade with which you vanquished your foe was composed of ether. Admittedly, your victory proved ephemeral as La Habrea was able to use a crystal of darkness to flee into the space that lies between our world and the void. This is good the fact pre remains, this is good preparation. However, that Heidelin placed the means to destroy the Asians in your hands. Be that as it may, it would be unwise to assume that you will do the same when we next encounter such a foe. Quite so, my lady. We must needs find the means to forge our own blade of ether. One to equal that which Heidelin did benevolently bestow upon her champion. That is all well and good, but it seems to me that producing such a blade will require a prodigious quantity of ether. Whence will it come, pray tell? We've been getting shipments from everyone containing crystals, so I should say we have enough. Um, oh, what if we had two pieces of white orosite? One to trap the Asian, and the other to store the ether for the blade. Oh, nice try. But it's as I said, the stone won't hold ether for any length of time. We'd still need to collect the stuff there and then, sorry to say. And therein lies the rub. Finding a way to create the blade whenever and wherever we choose. It would seem more research is in order. I'm going to linger a while, perform a few more tests on the Aura site. And I could do with some help. Orianger, why don't you lend me a hand? M mine apologies, but I am required at the Waking Sands. Sure. Lady Minfilia hath given me sole charge of the premises. Twould be unseemly to leave them unattended. She can join you there. Sole charge, you say? So you're basically alone there then? Well, that settles it. I'll just have to come to you. The idiot. Well, he did say he had lost only C could linger. Word arrived from the Charlian motherland. You will recall that a survey party was dispatched to investigate the incident at the Isle of Val. What they discovered was troubling, to say the least. Yeah, this bit. According to the report, the Isle has been erased from existence. It was as if a hole had been torn in the very fabric of reality. Aye, yet the mystery endeth not with the Isle's disappearance. 
It hath come to light that a number of scholars in various other locales were reported missing at a similar juncture. What's more, they all had something in common with the head of the students of Baldessian. Every last one of them was researching a phenomenon called dimensional compression, or the rejoining as the ancient texts call it. I'll be damned if that's a coincidence. All indications suggest Asian involvement, but I sense that a force greater still is at work. The entity the dark beings call the one true god. We must pray that my dear friend Kryle regains consciousness soon. If she bore witness to the Isle of Val's final moments, she may be able to shed some light on this mystery. Did, did we did we meet this Kryle person? Following the Calamity, the forces of the 14th Imperial Legion entrenched themselves in strategic locations across Eorzea. So swiftly did they accomplish this, it was suspected that they had received help. To think that it came from Huayu, my right hand. There is more. We have reason to believe that Huayu didn't deal exclusively with the 14th. She also answered to a higher authority in Golomol. But this higher authority could not have been the Emperor. By consenting to the media project, Solus Zos Galvis showed himself to be more concerned about preventing the spread of primal influence than claiming Eorzea for the Empire. He would happily have seen the lot reduced to ash. We believe a number of high-ranking figures within the royal household were against the decision, but that they knew better than to oppose the Emperor openly. Of course, this didn't prevent them from making clandestine provisions, in which Huayu played a part. Alas, these provisions did not prevent Dalamud from falling, and the ensuing chaos changed the face of the realm forever. Yet Eorzea survived. To all intents and purposes, the Meteor Project had failed, and the Empire was left to rue its lack of a decisive means to eliminate the Primals. Until, that is, it stumbled upon the Ultima weapon. It's kind of stupid, isn't it? Because from what I get is the Meteor Project. It was, is, is, Bar move is also primal, or where is he? Oh no, he's he's a, he's a weapon made, but he's he's way worse than the primals. Even before the accursed thing was dug up. It seemed to me the 14th had the might to overwhelm our weakened armies. Yet they chose to hide behind their walls. Why? Uh, why not? The Black Wolf was wary of making the denizens of Eorzea desperate, lest more primals emerge to bleed the land. The discovery of the Ultima weapon, however, emboldened him to resume his war of conquest in earnest. But there was one in Garlemald who believed that Van Belsar's actions were premature. One who stood higher in the Imperial Army's chain of command. He ordered the Legatus to halt his advance, only to find that the Black Wolf had slipped its leash, and that the 14th now acted alone. In a bid to bring Van Belsar to heel, he used the agent he had planted in Ulda prior to the Calamity to undermine the Legion's efforts. A man who outranks Van Belsa, yet opposed the late Emperor's decision to annihilate Eorzea. This could only be the former High Legatus of the Galian army, now known as Emperor Voris Zos Galvis. Okay. So he was Huayu's true master. But one of several in actual fact. We've learned that even as Huayu served the Empire's interests, she sold Imperial secrets to a certain faction in Eorzea. It was a double agent. In then. so doing, she helped to maintain the status quo, thus prolonging the conflict. Considering who stands to profit from war, 
It isn't hard to imagine who her other masters were. Seven Hells? You mean to say that she was a double agent? He is a clever guy, isn't he? Huh, triple. If you consider her services to Ben Belsar and the new Emperor as separate. As neatly as these pieces seem to fit, one aspect of the puzzle remains unclear to me. By whose will was the Marshal feeding intelligence to the heretics? And try as I might, I fail to see how aiding their cause would profit either her Imperial or Monetarist masters. Could it be that another hand is at work here? If so, why you must be made to reveal whose it is. Oh, we need to go to kill her. Not only have I lost a trusted friend, now I must interrogate her as a stranger. Not a pleasant task, I grant you, but a necessary one. Unless we weed out the ivy, root, stalk and stem, it will simply grow back. I know that full well. Those closest to Huayu have already been detained, and I will question them alongside her. General, and pray keep in mind that there may be unwitting abettors among them. True. All they were just under fairly. orders. On that you have my word. Those who are innocent have no cause to fear. You have ever been a friend of truth, General. I hope the unpleasant task of weeding out falsehood will not detain you too long. Though it be for the sake of Eorzea, doubting one's comrades is poison to the soul. And with that, I take my leave. All these years, I've been made to dance to their tune. How could you, Huayu? How could you side with them? Those cankers who take from this land and give naught in return, who use their power to disempower and grow fat while the people starve. He's best. Like him. I know you can hear me, monitorous scum. Your crimes will not go unpunished. So brutal. Today I will purge this land of your sickness before the eyes of the twelve. I swear it. Awesome. He's such a badass. I shall have no further need of you this day. Your Grace. I fear that not even my own chambers shall remain private for long. Oh, Suda? Has the situation grown so grim? Ever since he proposed the Cardinal Reclamation Bill, Talegi Adelegi has risen to greater prominence upon the backs of impoverished refugees. The monetarists were ever united in their pursuit of profit, but the man's actions have torn a rift in their ranks. They snap at each other as rabid dogs. Yet now is not the time to be bickering among ourselves. If this bickering is a threat to law and order, might you not have grounds to dissolve the syndicate? Would that the solution were so simple, Admiral. Alas, my moving to dissolve the Syndicate is certain to spark outrage among the influential merchant class, whom the Cabal represents. This would serve to exacerbate the current unrest, and peace would slip still further away. Be they rich or poor, natives or refugees, all who reside in Uldar have a right to pursue happiness. It is the duty of a ruler to protect this right. If I am to perform my duty, I must needs tread warily. It would not do to make enemies heedlessly. 
Well, you should be Lord too Lorito careful. Here, he would doubtless say that I have my head in the clouds. Like that. A ruler is required to take a wide view. Try as we might to cater to all needs, some will inevitably be overlooked. As such, there shall ever be citizens who feel aggrieved. It cannot be helped. But as you have informed us, the monetarists take no view but their own. They hunger for power while the masses starve. In the absence of a common cause, it seems beyond any one individual to make Uldar whole. And the presence of a Galian agent within the Immortal Flames only makes matters worse. Even accounting for Uldar's historic reliance upon mercenaries, such a grievous breach of security is unprecedented. I fear this business will provide the monetarists with a rod to beat Rauban. Eorzea can ill afford for the Immortal Flames to be dampened now. Ere long, the Garlians will turn their ravenous gaze toward our lands once more. If we are to resist their might, our nations must stand together. Yet for this to happen, our nations must be whole. Cannot be done to improve the situation in Ulda. The true wealth of Ulda lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her citizens. Alas. The citizens shall never know these things, so long as their lives are ruled by the ambitions of the few. The monetarists claim to represent the best interests of the people, but in sooth they desire only to manipulate them for their own selfish ends. For the government to serve the people, it must be formed of the people. For Ulda to move forward, it is not only the syndicate that must be dissolved. Nay, you jest. My friends, it was for no other reason than to make known to you my intent that I requested your presence here. When I make my declaration to the people, chaos shall inevitably ensue. As the last monarch in the line of Ul, I make unto you this request. Help Roban to preserve order, and protect the people. Forsake them, and you forsake yourselves. For a strong Eorzea will ever have need of a strong Ulda. Your Grace, are you certain of this? There is no other way. When the time is ripe. The nation shall become a true republic. Both royalists and monetarists shall cease to be. Uldar will no longer belong to kings or queens or merchant princes, but to her people. Nice. Roban. Forgive me for casting aside all that you have toiled for in my name. Beyond this gesture, I am powerless to help my subjects. Uh, wow, okay. wait, that's the end, then. Yeah. That's two point five before the fall, part one. Change the title, yeah. This is a short one actually, we, we'll, we'll get a dungeon and a trial and then it, I think it's a massive cinematic. Could, oh, that would be great if we can do that all together right now. I 
I am most eager to address the Asian threat, however, we dare not neglect our other pressing concerns. We both know fully well that the Saiyan Shiva was not, uh, will not be the last primal we face. Our relationship with Isgard is still dangerous at best. I think that the resolution of the primal threat was once the sole priority of the signs of the Seven Dawn. Some days I wonder if it was wise for us to take on so many other responsibilities. Lest you forget and dissident, the Scions need not shoulder the burden alone. Were not the Crystal Braves established for this very reason? True, we are present with a multitude of problems, however, we have all the resources we need to address them in turn. In particular, is ever a uh, is ever a steadying uh, okay, okay so une in particular is ever steadying hand who i trust will continue to support the braves to what uh, to what do we owe the pleasure have there been further developments regarding the situation in ulda as expected, the Immortal Flames will be struggling to cope with the uh, revelation that one of the high-ranking officers was a Garland agent. Suffice to say, uh, Tele Adelechi and the Monetarist Ilk have wasted no time in attempting to turn the situation to their advantage. Coped with ongoing unrest, the Flames are finding themselves hard-pressed. Plainly. General Roban needs our help and I will direct, direct the Crystal Braves to offer what support they can. If I'm to say abreast to if I'm to stay abreast of the latest development and issue effective orders, however, I cannot afford to waste time traveling back and forth. And so for the foreseeable future I think it would be best if I were to remain in Ulda, unless you have an objection. I don't. None whatsoever. We have matters here well in hand. Uh, Moon's research is proceeding as planned. So tell me, though I'm not familiar with the details, Uranjai is poring over his tomes at the Walking Sands and the others are contributing in their own ways. And that's the key problem, how to form a an ethereal blade at will remains unsolved. Nevertheless, it's only a matter of time. Une, while we focus at the task, may I could you assist Alfinot in his bra uh, and the Braves with theirs? It would do much to restore faith in the Immortal Flames if the Wolf Warrior of Light has seen working on their behalf. Never forget that your esteemed status allows you to act in ways that those might tightly bound to organization and nations cannot. As ever, I implore you to do so. Make no sense to me. Not that your responsibil uh, not that your response was ever in doubt, but I humbly thank you once more for aiding our cause. Now then there are preparation we must attend to before my departure such as Receiving Ryle's last report, of latest report. He has proven to be quite skilled at gathering information others wish kept secret. Hence why I placed him under my direct command and ordered him to investigate Ulda's rights. When you are finished here, join me outside. Depending on what he has to say, I may soon have to ask, uh, I may soon have a favor to ask. If there is any development in, uh, on our front, I shall inform you at once in the usual fashion. Okay, let's do it. Also, what was going on in the FC? Take a mic. Hey. Have a good break. Let's take a look. People are very quiet today. Okay, so he's real. Ryle, whatever his name, his name is.
Pleasure as always, Une. You'll be escorting the commander to Eldar, I'll take it. Actually, I had another task in mind for her. If you would be so kind as to repeat your report for her benefit. Right then. Oh my, here we go. Me and mine have been making inquiries to the source of the weapons that f found their way into refugee hands a way back. So it happens we caught wind of something promising, a rather large purchase of sharp and pointy things by a black marketeer holding up near Highbridge. I doubt that this man would have secured such, uh, such a quantity of weapons if he did not already have clients waiting. Clients that, for whatever reason, would prefer for this transaction to remain secret. Brings to mind that merchant was caught an oh brings to mind that merchant what caught an arrow while they, uh, while talking to uh, Une don't it generous fellow he was doling out swords and spears to the downtrodden and disgruntled which isn't to say that these clients have made mischief in mind but if you want to be sure might be prudent to intervene before they collect their goods, savvy? The pirates all talk alike. Seizing the weapons before they fall into the wrong hands would be for the best. However, if we strike at the appropriate hour, we might capture the black marketeer as well as his clients. What are you saying? Precisely. Then it's settled. Rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at Highbridge and intervene when the exchange takes place. Now then, if you would excuse me, Ali for Ulda, I expect good tidings. This thing can fly. So close to level eight. Ah, the MS guys have been keeping a clo uh, close eye on the black marketeer, and it would seem that his guests have arrived. It would also seem that he hired. Uh, more than a few men to stand guard. Common talks of common talks of no consequence, but they nevertheless pose a threat. Even so, I feel compelled to apologize. This is far beneath a woman of your standings. A and Commander Levenue needn't have dispatched you Hilda. But powerful men ever have need of loyal, able bodied friends. Having found one in you, it's only natural that he would have come to rely upon you without hesitation. Okay. Then let's go. Now then, we should make for the burning wall without delay and secure those weapons. The first unit will ensure that the clients do not escape with, with me. To the burning wall it is. Where the hell is that burning wall? Oh, wait, it's inside, right? Yeah, just inside. Okay, let's feed the chocobo. Twice. I've, I've failed to do this so many times. I should use him in combat more. He should be level 10 already. I spy the one man, but there are sure to be others. I have a plan. We will approach the sentry and create a distraction. My men and I will slip past and catch the black marketeer unawares. Once you've disposed of the tox, 
wait for us outside the tunnel entrance. Any questions? Let us be off. Good luck, my friend. Jump region on me. Who goes there? An adventurer? Damn fool. You should have never come here. I don't understand what what's this all about? Arr. Wait, did he? Did he just kill him? Yep, he did. As you can see, this is a fine mess. When I tried to restrain him, he drew a hidden blade and lashed out. But before I could disarm him, one of my subordinates panicked. And this is the result. How foolish of me to underestimate the bastard. And to bring an inexperienced recruit. Commander Levenier will be most disappointed. Damn it. A golden opportunity wasted. As for the clients though, we know not how they slip past our perimeter. At present, the first is currently tracking a party of dusk right cell swords. We suspect maybe them. Would that we could have enlisted the aid of the immortal flames or the bla brass blades. Alas, we're here to aid them. They're in no position to aid us. Well, at the very least, we can secure the wagons. Yet, even that accomplishment is lacking. For the information we received indicates a massive shipment, and this is anything but. That's weird. I will join the first in their hunt for the Duskrite cell swords. If the goods are if the gods are good, we will catch them before they escape into the Black Shroud. In the meantime, I ask that you deliver these weapons to Ulda in my stead. Entrust uh, entrust them to the third uh Yu Yu Hayes. He will take care of the rest. That's, that's kind of weird, man, this mission. Cut the Weaver's Guild. Track. 
Tak. There we go. Uh, the warrior of light, ever reliable friend of the crystal braves. You have my deepest thanks for your assistance in Kurtas. Now, what brings you to us this day? A uh, very small weapon chest. How the hell did I carry that? A gift of weapons from a certain black marketeer? Courtesy of Captain Ilbert, you say? Understood. Once we've catalogued these co uh, the contents, we'll have them delivered to the Hall of Flames. This cannot be everything, can it? Rael stated with confidence that there would be a far greater quantity of weapons. A blabbering falsehood. Rael is unfamiliar with the ways of the Uldan merchants. Who ever strive to present themselves greater than they are. Are, are they just badmouthing someone now? We should be thankful for that this information was not completely er erroneous. And that we managed to achieve anything of worth at all. It's still something worth celebrating, isn't it, Lieutenant? Besides, I've got more important things to worry about, like fighting those guardians up north. There'll be no fighting if I have anything to say about it. Our orders are to stand watch, not to seek glory in battle. If you have no further need of us, then I shall take my unit to the... Ceridium processing plant. Time for the fourth to earn their keep. Eh? Fight well for the freedom of all. So far, these have been weird ass missions, man. Excellent work as always, my friend. Rest assured that the immortal flames were here of your contribution. Until we meet again. Sure as I walk fast, these little fells. We need a ward, if you please. No need. Look for me at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. No need for whistling this time. Don't you worry. Okay. Sure. Where? Oh, actually, we're almost there. Cool. Thanks for indulging me request. Few places better than a market f uh, for privacy. I find all the hustle and bustle of commerce means most conversations go unnoticed. I'll get to the point. At the burning wall, when you and the captain interrupted the exchange, what happened? Tell me everything. Leave no detail out. Hmm. That's not quite how the first told it. These dusk wings they were chasing, last word is that we lost the trail. But you never saw them yourself, not before the fight started, and not after. Something isn't right. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it in my bones. I'm not daft enough to be misled by some merchant's drunken boast. Our information was reliable, goddammit. I know he purchased those weapons. Hmm. As if I've never deciphered a Mondilander's book or had to follow a transaction back to its source. Did plan did plenty of that back when the Braves were getting started, believe me. The commander wasted uh, wanted assurance that we weren't taking guilt from the wrong sort of benefactors. 
course these days the money flows like water and the first and third get the shiniest new toys. D okay. Forgive me friend. I have a lot of my mind these days and I appreciate your lending an ear. Right then. Best get back to it. So the first and the third will get the most shiny toys. Oh, Tataru is something. Can you hear me? It's Tataru. Your presence is urgently requested at the Rising Stone. Fine. Let's go. That's a cool ass outfit for Chocobo. Okay, Tataru, what do you need? Thank you for coming so quickly, Lune. We have a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. Um, most determined lady by all indications um, would that be like the night oh is it dungeon time our guest is with the dissident at the solar at present let's not keep them waiting here long shall we I think it's dungeon time that would be nice would be a nice change of pace wouldn't it Yeah, it's Lucia. We have a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. I believe the two of you have met. We have. I had hoped to speak with Commander Leveilleur as well, but I cannot afford to wait any longer. The Lord Commander sent me hither to request your aid in a matter of grave import. You see now why I had Tataru summon you. Not already. Now that we're all assembled, perhaps you would be good enough to elaborate on the nature of the matter which brought you to us. The Observatorium's astrologians have sounded the alarm. Last night, the Dragon Star burned with an intensity not seen in 15 summers. Not since the Dravanians engaged the Empire in the Battle of Silvatir Skies. Hmm. The northern sky doth burn full bright upon the Worm Lord's call. The red behemoth beckoneth, and flame consumeth all. The old Curthen rhyme, aye. The brightening of the dragon star is said to accompany the roar of a great worm. The astrologians believe that it was Midgard Soma himself who cried out on this occasion. After an absence of centuries, the King of Kings did return to lead his kind against the might of Garlemald, only to fall in his duel with the Agrius, proud flagship of the Galian fleet. Devoid of life, his corpse remaineth entwined about the Magitek monstrosity even unto this day. Ariange has the right of it. Whatever this alteration in the Dragon Star portends, the Great Worm has shown no sign of life. Tataru, have the Domans reported aught out of the ordinary? Correct me if I'm wrong, but if Midgard Zorma had roared, wouldn't we have heard it here in Revenant's Toll? Roar is but a figure of speech. Dravanians can communicate in ways beyond our ken. It is for this very reason that we are forced to look for signs in the heavens. We cannot say with any confidence that a great worm roared at all, much less that it was Midgard Sorma. Only by directly examining the Keeper of the Lake can we be certain. However, it will take too long to gain the Holy See's approval to dispatch the Temple Knights. Therefore, Sir Emric would entrust this task to you. Do you accept? Okay, I'll do it. 
We knew you would not disappoint us. Now, if you would excuse me, I must return and assist the Lord Commander. We have precious little time to prepare. To prepare for what, pray tell? When a great worm roars, his brethren cannot choose but answer. We prepare for battle. Be busy then. Oh, that's a bloody shame. Forgive me if I state odd, which you already know, but I would ensure that you understand the nature of your destination. As Uranje stated, we uh, that we now call the keeper of the lake is a wreckage of the Agarus, former flagship of the Imperial fleet and the corpse of the Wim, uh, Wim re respos responsible, R responsible for its destruction 15 years ago as the next step in this campaign to subjugate Eorzea, Gaius from Belzia attempted to seize control of Modona. So massive was his force that although his victory uh, a foregone conclusion but an unlikely ally came to Eorzea's aid that day a Midgard summon legendary guardian of the silver tear falls burst forth from beneath the waters of the lake and let the host of and let a host of dragons against the guardian flagship overhead in what later would be known as the battle of silver tear skies the Great Worm fell countless airships before engaging the Agrius. In the ensuing struggle, the flagship Ceruleum's engine failed and it tumbled into the lake below. Yet the victory came at a great cost, for the explosion which followed claimed the life of the Great Worm as well. That same explosion transformed Silverterre Falls into a desolated wasteland to this day drained the lake of its water and crystallizing ether from melms around. Yet a remnant of this lake remains and at its center a constant reminder of that faithful day long ago. In accordance to Sir Emmerich's wishes, our Doman allies have been standing watch over the keeper of the lake. It would be wise to speak with them before investigation the wreckage herself. All right. Be careful, my friend. We know not what dangers await you within. Now then, let us not neglect our own task. There is much to be done and precious little time to do so. I think I'll also change like the playlist on YouTube. Last online driving course. All right, let's say, uh, hi guys. Hi y'all. Uh, I think I have a dungeon up. Maybe they want to join. Probably have a dungeon up soon. If interested. So this is actually, I've not looked at this at all. Kind of difficult to see. I would like to have the dragon's head, but I'm thinking it's up there. Get the crystal tower in there as well, which is kind of cool. Sounds good to me. Cool. Awesome. Uh, also, million I've promoted you to NCO for your chatty 
toughness. Right, let's get all right. I'm off to bed. The person I have to help with an HPC is it. I'm struggling to stay awake, so I'm not going to bed. Brave. Have have a great night, uh, MC. Thank you for cleaning up uh, the channel of the bots, and I'll uh, I'll speak to you soon. Your unlock mist was about to send word to Revan's Tall about the Guardians. Of late, I've seen small airships like from Castrum Sentry come and go from the Keeper of the Lake, though I cannot say for certain at this distance, I believe they may be salvaging something from within the wreckage. The Castrum supply lines have been cut for some time and I wager they're desperate in need for spare parts for other equipment. Yeah, I'll have to take some something to drink. So, uh, I'll, I'll, after this is done, before we enter the dungeon, I'll get something to drink. So it's true then. The Asgardians honestly fear that the worm might rise again. Well, from here it seems rather unlikely. But if it's assurance they want, you'll have no choice but to inspect the corpse in its entirety. Easily said and done, given the creatures which inhabit the wreckage and the aforementioned guardians who won't take kindly to your presence. They're sure to fire upon an airship so I advise a more stealthy approach. Take this boat and a few of your comrades to the base of the Agrius. Then climb to the top. That's the only viable approach I'd say. There you go, Keeper of the Lake. Uh, let me get something to drink and then we'll do it. is cut is in a cutscene let's see what else do we have to do it's it's it's, it's I think it's level 50 what, what what does it give us keeper of the lake level 50 gives me tomes of the poetics it's, it's perfect We don't have to stay here. Let's see. Anything I can do. Adventure Scott has completed his business. Okay, he's good to go. No projects out. I'm waiting for, hopefully, some items. Thank you. Uh, let's queue us up then. Let's make sure we clear this. Yeah, that, uh, that would have been fast. Yeah, Ari is tank. And I'm going to be hopefully not failing his ass. Oh man, that's a yeah, that that's perfect. I like that picture a lot. Been a while since I've done this one.
and we actually gain a di wow what is this platoon doing movement speed increase effect upon entering battle Make sure we keep arrow on. It, it should actually be the first thing I do. Oh, we're already in. Everyone has regen. Eight damn frogs. Fellow over here. Let's make sure he has regen. Okay, let's go with Medica. Oh, okay. Um, there's bombs. Yeah, those are exploding. Let's do another medica because they were clearly out of range. Uh, regen on the tank. I kind of don't think I need to heal him right now, we can just keep damaging. Uh-oh. Okay, let's go with Medica. Please don't, 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 don't move yet, don't move yet, come here. It's too close. I don't think you will actually have enough time to do more. Five, four, three, two, one. Die. I'll need it. I, I don't care. I I'll need everything if I can need it. I need seals. I'm not talking about baby things Ring is this? 
Not bad, actually. over the loot. It, even though I would really, really like to. Let's get closer and closer to it. Wow, I'm rolling like nothing. This is a joke, man. Six and two. Make sure we stand in the back. Get that. At least that's a 64. This gunship's going to be annoying, isn't he? I guess everyone's together, okay, then fine, yeah. Do a medica. Okay, he's going to be on the move again. Loot's disappointed. I was actually hoping for more, but still, the, these items. Wait, am I, am I getting like everything? No way. Five. Again, when I need something, it's like five. Damn joke. wasn't. I like this platoon though. I didn't know the Lugalist could actually do that or whatever it's called now. Or Yeah. 
gun. Who treadeth now upon my bones and waketh me from slumber sweet? Oh, he is, a, he is awake. Thou hast forgotten the face of thy lord. Remember, mortal, and fear me. Oh, okay, I think we fight a ghost. It's a ghost, it is weird. Just keep arrow up, slow and steady. Is he getting healed or... Oh, that's mean. That, that's mean. So let's hope we don't have to do too much for it. Okay, go in. Okay, cast Medica. Aoife. Arrow. Aoife. Arrow. 50%. Boss time. Uh, we have a lot of catching up to do. Bar is gone. And where to go? Ooh, that looks nice, but hardly any damage. Why are you there?
like a level two. Hey, how are you doing? How are you? How's life? Getting up. Oh, it's it's ten past two a.m. Thank you. Uh. Okay, what's the loot? I'll read it. W what is it? Well, it's a hundred. Let's try it on. Looks cool though. I should probably fill my glamour chest first. Eight PM, almost time for. Oh, you have the night shift. I have that tomorrow in the weekend. By her gifts, hast thou earned a moment's reprieve? Speak, mortal. I think I got the text. I shall listen. Did you do the Power Ranger quest? No. What do I need to do? I'll do it. Guided um, by a star. Probably during the weekend. <laughs> My people have heard the song. Ishgard. Shall burn. Sons must answer for their father's misdeeds. We do not forget. We do not forgive. Probably just a very tiny question. I do want it. Children did I sire, one now singeth of retribution. I rise to join in the chorus. Thou art powerless to silence us, mortal, yet thou shalt not live to labor in vain. Thy reprieve is at an end. Till when uh, does the event go? Ah, trickery is thy shield. This frail, noble creature is not gifted, but chosen. Probably till the next main turns then. Fear not, mortal. I shall not harm thee. He's death while bloody freaking impaling me. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, it's actually good. Oh. Thank you. I'll post that on the... Uh, on Discord later today. I, at least I don't have to do it now because... It's like 15 minutes past 2 a.m. I kind of want to... 
get over 2.5 and then next time do 2.55 so next week we should be able to start uh, heaven's ward uh, mayhap thou thinkest me an oath breaker thou art mistaken if thou comest to harm it shall be by another's hand, not mine. I did but strip thee of thy mistress's feeble blessing. Thou didst profit much by her grace, but no more. Sure as hell, talk slow. I drink of her body, and thence doth mine own find new life. When it hath grown whole, the loyal and penitent shall rejoice. The dragon song heraldeth a beginning and an end. Uh, you may have summoned Miss Gum by selecting the corresponding entry within your minion guide on the character. I was beginning to fear the worst. Were those explosions I saw? Ah, but you shouldn't waste time talking to me. Alfie not left a message starting, uh, stating that you were to return to the Rising Stone at once. I know it's nearby. But, I'll definitely teleport. Also, get that stone. So what I'll be doing, like during the weekend, is I'll do a lot of dungeons. And the gear that is not in my glam chest, I'll start placing it in. And that's including these items. So yeah, some of it will be in my glam chest. The others will be going for seals. And here's our final. Brazer 12, you are half and whole. I came as soon as Mentfilia informed me of Sir Emmerich's request. You have completed your investigation of the Keeper of the Lake, I take it. Then I would hear your report. Your converse with Midgard Summer? I swear. Were anyone else to make such a claim, I would regard it with considerable skepticism. And we... Are we to understand that the Wyvern Lord did not perish and has in sooth lain dormant these past 15 years? Lesser resurrection 
and more a rejuvenation for he who dwells in eternity years passing as moments is that Shakespeare? those words are ambiguous at, at times a statement left little room for interpretation my people have heard the song is God shall burn clearly an attack is imminent we must share this information with Sir Emmerich immediately however we dare not divulge your conversation with Midgard Sam in its entirety to even acknowledge that you heard the voice of a Dravanian, Dravanian is a grave but necessary risk lest we forget men have been executed as heretics for declaring as much for your own protection and for the sake of our tenuous relationship with Ishgard the truth cannot leave this room then, then how, how do we know how are you going to tell him as of now we shall present our revelation to Sir Emmerich's emissary you may leave that to me pray remain here for now why you, you, you go to do the talking boy uh oh is there something you are not telling us in it? You seem different somehow. It's almost if you are missing something, something important. Twelve, for fat Midgard summer stripped you of the blessing of the light. Are you all right? How do you feel? I feel light as a feather. I see. It's a relief to hear that you are otherwise unharmed. It beggars belief that any being could possess the power to deprive you of her blessing. Hmm. Midgar Summon made mention of a covenant, did he not? One of the ancient myths regarding Silver Tear Fall states that when the waters came into existence, so too did the Great Riven. Oh dear lord. Altic and... Nebia, Brother Time and Sister Faith, the creed that Midgard Summon ever watched over the source from which all water and magic was set to flow. I wonder, what is this but the covenant of which he spoke, and was not the god of whom he tread, but Heidel in herself? Well, if he was watching over you as he claimed, mayhap you will have an opportunity to ask. Let us keep this matter to ourselves. Do not, I do not wish to burden our friends unnecessarily. What kind of pens is that? Art thou a pawn or master of thy faith? What hast thou wrought with thy own hands, mortal. Whatever. My friend, I can scarce believe it. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. I give thanks to Heloni for your preservation. It is our sole cause for gladness. Your encounter with the Keeper of the Lake served to confirm our fears. A great worm has roared, and it makes little difference if it was one of the two in Eorzea or any other. The Dravanians are coming. I am told that Ishgard has magical defenses against Dravanian attack, though I am not privy to their exact nature. And I don't think they will tell you either. Will they be enough to repel a massive force? Ishgard has weathered countless assaults over centuries. This will be no different. And now that you have confirmed the threat, none can ignore the Lord Commander's calls for the wards to be strengthened. I dare not presume to speak for him, but I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. 
I must away. But we shall meet again soon. Cool. Countless assaults weathered, and this will be no different? Why am I not convinced? Because you are a gloomy skeptical dude. Easy to see on the dungeon, expect when you go online for those cross references if any of you missed them. Today we should add a website with all dungeons and stuff to the Discord. His guardians were war uh, have warred with the Ravones for centuries, nigh nearly one thousand years. In all that time, not once have the enemies breached their defenses and entered the city proper. Yet regardless of how strong these magical wards may be, I nevertheless fear that the Isgardians are underestimating the gravity of the situation. Though it was not Midgard Summer who roared, a call to arms by one of the first blood cannot be ignored. Such, uh, Until such times as they chose to request our aid, however, we can do not but observe the situation at a distance and pray that our fears are unfounded. Uh, Eva on the mat. Okay. Era, I forget. I believe Moonbra as Moonbria. Moonbrida? Moonbrida? Whatever. Moon. Has requested a gathering of the science. I assume there has some progress concerning our efforts to combat the Essians. Pray inform her that our business with the S Guardians is concluded for the moment. I shall be along once I've accompanied my have completed my communications with the Crystal Braves. Alright, let's go talk to her then. All done with your talk of dragons, wonderful. Because Ashians are next to next on the menu, let's head into the solar cell we. Kind of the reason I want to do 2.5 now is because I know in 2.55, like the the second part, the end of the Realm Reborn, is probably accompanied with a lot of videos. Now that everything's calmed down a bit, relatively speaking I mean, I thought it might be a good time to share our progress on the weapon. I believe we're on the verge of a breakthrough. Well, don't keep us all in suspense. Just in case anyone's forgotten, let's start by reviewing what we already know. So, an Asian is an immortal because its soul doesn't return to the ethereal realm when its host is defeated. Instead, it flees to the place that lies between our world and the Void. Therefore, the first step to permanently defeating an Asian is preventing its soul from making this journey. And if you recall, when we last gathered here, I had verified that White Aurasite has adequate capacity to entrap the beings, albeit only briefly. Which left the small matter of their extermination. Aye. To unmake an Asian soul, one must needs smite it with a concentrated burst, or blade, of purest ether. 
However, we wanted for both the data and the means to forge such a weapon. Short of experimenting on an actual Arsian, you see, there's no way to gauge how much ether its soul is made of. As such, we don't know what etheric density our blade needs to have in order for it to work. So we'll just have to make the densest blade we can and hope for the best. Though, that would require a lot of ether. Hang on a minute! Why didn't we think of this before? White Aurasite can hold an absolute heap of ether, can't it? Please tell me you're joking. God's sakes, Ida. I feel as though I'm reliving the same scene over and over with you. How many times do you need to be told that White Aurasite cannot store ether for long periods? Being intangible matter, ether is given to dispersion. Only in its crystallized form is it a stable source of energy. I will test you later on this, so see to it you do not forget. Uh, right, yes. It's all coming back to me. So our hopes rest on good old crystals again, do they? While they are certainly reliable, they leave something to be desired in the area of portability. Indeed. I am reminded of the quantity of corrupted crystals required to thwart Leviathan, and the extraordinary lengths to which the Lamentsons went to transport them. What if it should prove that a similar quantity was needed to destroy an Asian soul, or still more? I do not envy the poor sod who has to lug all of that around, on the off chance that an Asian appears. That's the very problem we set out to solve. And I reckon we've found the answer. If it isn't practical to lug around the ether we need, we'll just have to draw upon another source. And the only viable source is the land. If you mean to tap the Great River of Ether, know that it will entail considerable risk. Meddling with the currents may well induce a surge like to the one which despoiled Mordona. Give me a bit more credit, will you? Why would we need to tap the river when there are veritable reservoirs jutting out all over the land? Aye, I speak of corrupted crystals. It might be that their aspect is out of balance, but a crystal's a crystal. It contains ether, and we can help ourselves to it. While corrupted crystals are indeed abundant, there is no guarantee that they will be in close proximity at a crucial moment. But what if we don't need them to be? What if we could tap their power from afar? A uh, malm away, say? If we could do that, we'd have ready access to either a plenty in almost every corner of Eorzea. I've yet to put my theories to the proof, but I've got a good feeling about this. If no one has any objections, I'd like to see where this avenue leads. If you think it worth your while, you have my blessing. But tell us, what are your theories? I, for one, am most eager to understand the process, however vaguely. I thought you might say that, but no one wants to listen to boring old theories all day, do they? I know I don't. So with your permission, I'd like to try something a bit more hands-on. I've already built an etheric siphon especially for this purpose, and I've been meaning to try it out. The thing is, the profusion of corrupted crystals in Mordona makes it something of a high-risk testing ground. If anything goes awry with the siphon, it would be better if it didn't happen within spitting distance of quite so much ether. Uh, makes sense. Ideally, I need an isolated specimen. Does anyone know where I can find one? May I suggest Northern Thanalan? There you will find corrupted crystals of middling size, standing a reasonable distance apart. Ideal for your needs, I should have thought. Oh, and if you do elect to visit the place, I should be much obliged if you would assist me in another matter while you are in the area. Of course. Has something happened? Movement has been observed at Castrum Meridianum. During Operation Archon, the Alliance dealt the stronghold a heavy blow. Its facilities were extensively damaged, and its garrison reduced to a fraction of its former strength. I don't get why we didn't take over those strongholds. Not long after our forces withdrew, however, their ranks were replenished by reinforcements from Castrum's sentry. They now seek to rebuild. 
And to this end, they have their sights set upon the Ceruleum processing plant. I don't get that. Why would you let a Gifus thing like that go? Having lost the Empire's support, the 14th Legion lacks the resources to sustain itself. To them, this is a bid for survival, and they will doubtless fight like desperate men. Though I have dispatched the Crystal Braves, I fear their strength alone may not suffice to stay the Imperial assault. I would request the Scion's aid in the defensive effort. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to inveigle us into fighting or battle with the promise of shiny crystals. Well then, consider me inveigled. I won't lie, the crystals you speak of sound perfect, so the Garleans have to go. I agree. Besides, we can't afford to beat about the bush. There's no telling when the Arsians will next appear. Thine eagerness to hurl thyself into the jaws of danger cometh as little surprise. Exercise due caution, my prithee. Though you have become a crystal brave, you are yet a scion, Alfino. We could hardly refuse you. Pray, join the crystal braves and lend them your support. Thangrid and Papa Limo shall accompany you. Ida and Yashtola, in the meantime, I would have you assist Moon Breeder. Scout out the crystal clusters, that the testing may commence as soon as the Galian threat has been eliminated. Okay. If it please you, I shall continue mine own experiments on White Orosite. Thank you, Ariange. Everyone, pray see to your preparations and depart as soon as you are able. Go well. And be safe. We can move. Okay, we need to talk to. Hey, it's just outside. Great. Sometimes it really takes long to load in this area, I don't know why. It would seem that the events have once more conspired to rob us of the rest and repercussion, reper reparation, reparation, whatever. Recuperation, of course, you dingus. Though it would, uh, I would wish it otherwise, I must ask that you head straight away to the processing plant. The fourth uh, have already deployed to the area and await the arrival of the science. Wilfred will brief you on the developing situation. Meanwhile, I must rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at our headquarters in Ulda. I shall take command of our forces there with a lighter heart knowing that you go support the front lines. Spoken like a true commander. Safely in a command post. Do these take you northern Taladan, do they not? Oh god, what do you want? We too must say our farewells to the Rising Stone for a time. Mil... Minion travels to Ulda and we shall serve as her escort. At my daughter's behest, I go to contact certain old acquaintances to the Guild City. The Gilden City. We are bested in all sides by civil unrest and imperial machinations, threatened by primals and troubled by dragons. We need all the allies we can muster. Many of my friends hold positions of power, you see, and it's my hope that they can be convinced to aid the science cause. If past events have taught us anything, we know that Eosia must present a united front or we shall fall. Ah, how extraordinary that my little Askelia is involved in such a far-reaching affairs. I'm proud that, uh, that I might now stand at her side, not only as a mother, but also as a colleague. A colleague with influential connections, but I fear Ulda has come a place of danger, even for those, for, even for one so familiar with the streets. Bah, well tides do back guard that is so much as glazes, of glares at our direction, my lady. Now, could you just go? Oh, Seriously, dude. 
Ah, shall be well protected, it seems. Shall be on our way then. Good. I kind of want to. I still feel like I want to finish this part. It's like one, two, three more st stories, missions, and then call it a night. Kind of depends on how long this will take. Command 11, you have sent word that you'd be coming. A veteran of talent is most welcome. Not that I don't think we can handle the situation, mind you. I've learned a, f a trick or two since the disaster with the Almajav. You also got some new scars, it seems, by returning to the task at hand. The flames reckons scouts have reported Imperial soldiers assembling at uh, Roban's push. Such a force is likely interested in one uh, in only one thing getting their hands on the resources founded here at the processing plant the guardians should begin mar uh, could begin marching on, on us at any time pray speak with the lieutenant Eidelstein that we might coordinate our counter strategy in the meantime I will phone the others that you have arrived no doubt it will be a welcoming tiding Ah, Lieutenant, my soldiers yet tell tales of your deeds during Operation Arkham. Would that we could sit a while and reminisce about old times, but I fear more pressing matters require our attention. The civil Dortmund, Dortmund you see, have come across several highly suspected crates within the boundaries of the processing plant. I had my sappers take a closer look and our worst fears are confirmed. Those boxes contain powerful explosive devices. Devices of imperial design no less. By my order the flames stationed here are conducting a thorough sweep of the compound as we speak. Though it troubles me that we were unable to apprehend the imperial spy behind this, I have faith that our men will be able to neutralize the threat for now. In the meantime our scouts bring troubled news on the latest movements of the Imperial Army. I would once again ask for your aid. Be keeping a close eye on the Gallian garrison and it would seem the Imperials have finally begun to mobilize. According to the reckons, uh, reckoning, reckoning report that just came in. A squad seems leaving the guest room just a few in numbers to effectively take and hold our position. Are leaving are uh, too few in numbers to okay. They would likely mount a swift assault and focus on acquisition of resources. I have of course also shared this report with the Crystal Braves. They've decided to take to the field and meet this assault head on. I've apprised your fellow signs of the situation, and I'm harder to know that they will be joining the effort. Pray report to Lieutenant Alain and lend your much welcome strength to the counter offense. Let's have us, we're glad to have you with us, Une. I am sure the lieutenant has explained the Guardians have deployed a small force from Castrum. Their main column assembles to the north near Dalaman's talons, but we've also spied several squads attempting to conceal themselves on the approach to the west. 
something with his face. They wish you to rush forth and commit to battle with the main column, leaving the detached force free to raid the plant and pillage supplies. Not much of a strategy, but these are desperate men. Captain. Reading sign, I understand, I understand the, that uh, the commander bids you and your fellow uh, fellows uh, wait. I understand the commander bids you and your fellow fellows come lend a hand to the brave. Oh, you fellows, oh yeah. With such mighty heroes at our disposal, the fourth should have little trouble contempting with odd the guardians might throw at them. But even you cannot be everywhere at once. The third was getting restless. Was getting restless all up in Ulda. So I marched them out here to fill any holes in the planned defenses and add their numbers to the counterattack. The reinforcements are welcome. We have enough soldiers now to divide our own forces to safely engage the enemy far beyond the walls. Aye. It would be best to avoid staging a battle anywhere near this much Ceralium? Let's take the fight to the Guardians. A wise course indeed. I shudder to think of the consequences should any of these storage tanks be exposed to fire. If there's no objection, the sun shall join the fourth and give battle to the main column. You're with the third then, Warrior of Light. Your job will be to intercept these squads hiding out to the west and prevent them from reaching the processing plant. When you are ready to proceed, report to the lieutenant. His scouts should have a rough idea where the Imperials have concealed themselves by now. Wait, see, M Moon is a bloody warrior. Oh, that is cool. Pleasure to be fighting at your side once more, Sign. Our operations invariably succeed when you're around. Then victories are wont to pave the road to greater coin. Now, this detachment this detached force we've been sent to eliminate has split into smaller squads. The better to better uh, the better to conceal themselves within the terrains hereabouts, I imagine. We'll need to split ourselves up as well to cover more ground and make sure we root out all these would-be raiders. And seeing as you're an army unto yourself, I've assigned you your own areas to scour clean of enemy soldiers. Aye, this will be simple search and destroy. We'll rendezvous back here when the task is done. Happy hunting. Okay, but we did level, so we could actually use our warrior. It's been a while since I used him. And you could make the fight even easier. Buff going. I hate paralyze. So annoying. That's a valiant fiber. That could be nice. Then. 
Was it in time? No, it wasn't. It's quite a shame. to fight with everything over here, so let's get back. Wait, they're just waiting here? I think they were just waiting here. You seem grim, so I'll not take it that to... Uh, I'll take that to mean that between us. More than a few guardians won't make it back to the castrium. These Imperials, though, they certainly made us earn our pay. It would be a I would be a happy man if I never had to trussle with another one of those Magitek horrors. It is time we bid this war torn land farewell. I'll contact the four fourth and let the lieutenant know the West is now clear. I would appreciate it if you would do the same when you report to the Lieutenant Eidelstein. What, what did they do? I don't think they did a lot. Ah, uh, Lieutenant, with news of the Guardians. I killed them all. The raiding parties are no more than excellent. The Almagia engineers will be most relieved to hear that the plant is no longer in any immediate danger. Thanks you again for your assistance. An uninvited Asian. You must be anxious of word of your fellows. The lieutenant has reported a sound victory over the main column and informs me that the signs have already turned their attention to other duties. All but one, that is. Uh, Rugandi. The Rugandine lady with the large axe. To it appears she has chosen to remain at side of battle. I know not what task keeps her from returning to civilization, but Northern Teladon is no place to wander alone, even for capable swords such as her. I would certainly feel better about things if you could check on her before you continue on your way. Where is she? But she's just outside. Oh, yeah, of course. Hold on, I won't be a second. The beast seemed peckish, so I gave it a taste of my axe. I know, I know, as Urianger never tires of reminding me. An oh, axe no. ill becometh the hand of a scholar. <sighs> what can I say? I like axes. To hear my mother tell it, I came into this world holding one. And it's not as if it stopped me picking up a quill, is it? <laughs> I often think of the man who introduced me to the joys of learning. He's one of the reasons I decided to come to Eorzea. Him and my excruciatingly stiff childhood friend. Considering how unalike we are, it's a wonder we ever got on. <laughs> the world's a strange old place, isn't it? Aye, that ought to do it. So far, so good. At these concentrations, it shouldn't matter too much if something goes awry. Just enough ether to make it interesting. Did you see that? The way the crystal glowed? 
The siphon works, I'm happy to say. With a few refinements, it should satisfy our appetite for ether. Which just leaves the small matter of forging our blade. I'm not sure how to go about it just yet, but I swear to find a way. I'll put a blade in your hands if it's the last thing I do. She senses me. A useful talent. Anarsian, are they on to us? By your brand, I see you are an Archon of Charlian, Keeper of knowledge, seeker of truth. Meddler. <laughs> I don't know what the hells you're saying, but I don't much like your tone. <laughs> your instincts serve you well. But come, be not unsettled on my account. That lovely brow was not made for frowns. Ah, uh, but I waste my breath. True. Let me direct my words to one who understands them. We meet at last, warrior of light. I am Nabriales. And you have long been a thorn in my side. I suffered the overweening presence of Lahabrea that men might host the power of gods, only for you to undo my hard work. Oh, bugger. Do settle down. You must concede that I acted in self-defense. But what's this? I do not sense the blessing of light. Oh, dear. Could it be that frail Heidlin has forgotten her champion? This I did not foresee. Shorn of light as you are, you are no longer a threat. And better yet, the seal is broken. Now is the time to claim the staff. With it in my grasp, I shall rise above them all and take my place at Lord Zodiac's right hand. Okay. What did that bastard want with us? Nabriolus, he calls himself. <laughs> with charm like that, I'll bet he has maidens falling at his feet. Unconscious. But this staff, you say just talking about it had the bastard grinning like a brat on his name day. Huh. Must be quite a staff. Oh, gods. He means Tupsimati, Master Louis Soir's staff. Minfilia's in danger. We have to get back to the Rising Stones. How the hell did you get here? Master Louis Swan's staff is kept uh, in the Solent, uh, Sola, isn't it? Quickly now. able to divine my intent. What now, warrior of light? Ah, but that name is no longer fitting. You have become decidedly dull and quite incapable of barring my entry. What do you mean? You truly do not know. Then I suppose it is only right that I enlighten you. 
The blessing of light kept you and your fellow meddlers safe. It was that which prevented my kind from entering your domain. My kind, I say, though it had no power over the likes of Elidibus and La Habrea. Being of this world, they could come and go as they please, while I could only look on. But I need look no longer. Now that the seal is gone, I mean to act. Unlike the others, I am not given to waiting. I shall take that staff and bring about the next rejoining. Rejoining? Then it was your doing. The Isle of Val, the scholars, all of it. You will not harm her! Aim. <laughs> Moonbreeder! Why must you insist on forcing my hand? Did you learn nothing from our last meeting? Ah, but I forget. My words fall upon deaf ears. Yeah, she the doesn't look good. The staff is but a broken relic, a memorial to the departed. What possible use could you have for it? What use? You mean to say that all this time you kept the key, never knowing what it was you possessed? The staff Tupsimati, or rather the stone tablet it bears, is host to a great power. Together with the horn, it can be used to draw vast quantities of ether from its bearer's surroundings. How else do you think Louis Soi was able to invoke the power of the Twelve without making them an offering of crystals? Summoning requires not only prayer, but a profusion of ether. Even a child knows that. If I did not know before, you may be certain I do now. But above all, I know that we cannot allow this staff to fall into your hands. I will die before I let you take it. Okay. Insufferable woman. I would happily end your miserable life here and now. Alas, Elidibus would never let me hear the end of it. Very well. If you will not part with the staff, I will take you too. Again. Man. Seriously, what's up with her? She's been what? She's been kidnapped three times now? After them! Quickly! Before the rift closes! Okay. I guess we have another one. Um, see, again, it takes so long to actually... What's this one called? Let's take a look. The crystalus is any for the trial. This. We'll see if none join in this. This is where I would have probably then ended. Do thanks to healers for DPS. One party is looking for the embers. Turn that one off. 
One is looking for the world of darkness. Thirty-seven parties are recruiting. He's actually online. Actually, I think this is a good way. A good. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I never know. Never mind. We'll do this one. That's that. That's it. Good thing I did earlier today in roulette. Completely forgot about it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it's 3 a.m. for me, so my brain's off. Should be fine. Okay, let's go. Hopefully. It goes pretty pretty fast oh, one DPS Yeah, that's going to be a while, I guess. I guess we're going to be looking for another DPS. Oh, never mind. That face. <laughs> that face. He's going to be the first tank. Keep him up, what's this? Double. Double what? Balls. Oh. Yeah, 
Ja, weil halt. Yeah, I knew it was happening. That's just annoying. Usually the tanks do that part, I believe. Now I'm quite low on MP and I really don't like that. I have to be quite conservative. I think he will do that ball thing one more time. Yep, there he goes. Oh, that was just in the nick of time. Ah, uh, I'm not going to wrestle right now. Because I don't have the fast cast, I'm not going to spend time doing that. Fast cast is ready. Usually, uh, the first time I did this one, uh, I wiped on this. Oh god.
Yeah, okay, it's done. That's it. That's actually quite hectic. I was mean to me, someone sat in the party. You're safe. Thank the Twelve. Yeah, we, we need to capture him now. First time I'm seeing this. You may have bested me this day, but what of the next? What of all the days to come? Remember. Light no longer holds sway here. I may return whensoever I wish. Again and again and again. Eventually, you will falter and the staff will be mine. Until next time, Scions. There will be no next time. This is the end. What? What trickery is this? No. No! Cannot. No! Damn bright. Use Tube Samati to gather ether. Quickly, before he breaks free. Like I know how to use it. Concentrate. Call to mind the time you struck down La Habrea with the Blade of Light. Why won't it work? Is it because we lack the blessing of light? Damn it. So much ether. And it still isn't enough. Fools! No mortal prison can contain me! I shall make you pay for your insolence! Please! Mother Heidelin! Hearken to our plea! Lend us your divine light! Why can you not hear us? Do our words no longer reach you? If only we had a bit more ether. Moonbreeder, what are you doing? Master Louis I understand now the choice you made. 
In death, there is life. Farewell, Orion Shay. You daft old coot. Moonbreeder, no, you mustn't. Breeder. She's... she's gone. You did it, my friend. The Asian is dead. This device is a legacy of Moonbreeder's toils and sacrifice. I shall hold on to it for safekeeping. Minfilia, uh, are you all right? I am. Oh, we were surveying northern Thanalan when we received the distress call. We returned as swiftly as we were able. And they're always too late. It seems you have everything in hand, however. What happened here? Where is Moonbreeder? She gave her life to temper the Blade of Light. I... I have no words. Rather than await the inevitable, she took her fate into her own hands. Does... Zerionje, no? My friend, there is something I must tell you. I heard all, my lady. The moon sinketh, taking her leave of the heavens, yet her passing heraldeth the coming of a new day. Moonbreeder hath fulfilled her destiny, hath she not? Long ago, far across the seas in the Charlian motherland, Moonbreeder and I did study under the sage tutelage of Master Louis Soir. Full oft did he impress upon us that knowledge existeth to serve the greater good. This sentiment, however, was contrary to the nation's policy of neutrality, which censured intercedence in the affairs of foreign lands. In spite of vehement opposition, he founded the Circle of Knowing, and journeyed hitherto the heart of Eorzea. Through his noble sacrifice was the realm spared its doom. Yet this great soul, whom all should rightly have honored, was branded a pariah in his own land. His peers did accuse him of forsaking his duty as a man of learning and of meddling in the course of history. When he left Charleon behind, Master Louis Soir gave no word to signal his intent to Moonbreeder. Close as they were, as master and disciple, she was deeply wounded by the sudden exclusion from his confidence. Above all, however, she was confused, 
Try as she might, she could ill comprehend her master's motive. The slanders that were heaped upon him after his passing served only to inflame the turmoil within her. For years upon end, she knew not what to believe. Torn as she was, twixt the man whom she revered, and the man who forsook her and his duty both. The Louisois I knew would never forsake his duty, much less one of his own. This I know full well, my lady. Twas not for want of love that Master Louisois hid his intent. He but desired that Moonbreeder discover her own path, free of the shadow of his influence. Long did I contemplate revealing the truth to her, and long did I hold my peace. After all, was it not Master Louisois' wish that she come to the truth unaided? Uh, I told myself it was, and resolved to let her suffer. Knowingly did I deny my friend the comfort she craved. And now she hath gone to her rest with doubt still in her heart. Speakest thou in earnest? Did Moonbreeder truly come to understand Master Louisois' will before the end? <laughs> uh, the realization hath set her free. She may now find the peace which hath for so long eluded her. Oh, Moonbreeder, my dearest, how I shall miss thee. Moonbreeder gave her life that we might possess the means to defeat the Asians. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. Let us continue her work on the Blade of Aether and see it to completion. My lady, I would mourn Moonbreeder in mine own way. I beg your permission to return to the Waking Sands. Of course, my friend. Take all the time you require. We shall be here should you have need of us. Well, let's talk to Minfilia, and that will be it for me. Oh, that's a bloody shame. Never have I seen Uranger so utterly defeated. No one should be made to suffer this grief. We shall gather in the Shadowland Meadow to celebrate Moonbria's life and mourning and mourn her passing. Uh, we will take. I don't know, man, just take something. Well, the morning we will do next time. But now, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Thank you.